Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're on. <laughs> We're on. Hi, everybody. Miss Caitlin is here, and I have a really special guest. Look who it is. It's Megan Fairchild. Say hi, Megan. <laughs> hi, guys. <laughs> now, I guess we might need to get out of the way how we know each other. Right. Because some people do not know that. In fact, I had a person last week that was saying it was pretty kind of funny. They were like, oh, do you maybe know Megan? Could you ask her a question for me? And I was like, do, yeah. Do I, I know Megan. So, <laughs> so maybe we better tell everybody. Sure. You might all want to know. Yeah. Kaylin's my very, my very first ballet teacher. I was... What? what? What's that? I'm oh, the one. number one. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. you had something to say. No, no. <laughs> you think I'm correcting you? Yeah. Yeah. I. What was I? Five. Five years old. Five. Yeah. And I was seventeen. And I just turned eighteen. That's crazy. I did not we know were you were together. that old. I thought I assumed you were more like in your twenties. Like when you're that little, everyone Every seems so old. Not yeah, old. everybody did. Yeah. In fact, I probably have never told you about um, the hiring process that I went through. At Dance Concepts? To, yeah. I probably have never told you about that, but no. they put me through the ringer. Oh, wow. Well, they were yeah, all, you guys students. were all great teachers, so it was a great place to be. And You know, we, we actually probably should talk about that because not just was I one of your first teachers, but you had some amazing teachers. I mean, Miss Judy. Right. I mean, couldn't be any, I mean, she's just flat out amazing. I mean, Megan or Melissa. Right. I mean, I. Melissa was an amazing. Brilliant. Yeah, they, everyone was great there, really, now that I think about it, really. Uh, yeah, I mean, Becca, I yeah. mean, I've never seen a teacher more prepared, more organized right. in my life. Right, right. Than yeah, so we um, have to think back. But Melissa, Melissa's, Melissa's warm up is still, I think, my favorite warm up, jazz warm up that I've ever done. Mm hmm. Yeah, my mom made me, um, even when I went to the Ballet West Conservatory, she made me go back and, wait, is there yep. music in the background? Um, that might be my children oh, okay. watching Okay, no Onward. problem, no problem. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. You know, Onward came out on Disney+, Plus, so we all have to watch it now. So keep going. Tell everybody. Keep oh, going. Tell everybody so something. So then uh, we we did some dance competitions over the years, and you choreographed my very first ballet solo. My mom still has a tutu. It's like this big, the mm -hmm. little white tutu. And then we did another solo. Which she was so stressed about. Yes. Another solo with the, the purple tutu. Yeah. And then and then we did um, a black swan solo. Black swan. And Kaylin mm -hmm. made me rehearse these 32 fuetes in my, at home every day. And we did. We moved the kitchen table. My mom and I, well, my mom moved the kitchen table, and and I did thirty two fuetes on, in my flat shoes in my ballet flats in the kitchen every every day. So see you guys. You can still be improving while at home. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you just got to move some furniture. <laughs> yep. We, we've all moved our furniture, right? Everybody, yeah. you've all moved your furniture. You're doing everything you're supposed to. I know Miss Kaylin's dancers. I see you every week. Everyone's dancing in their living room, their family room. I even have dancers in their cute bedrooms. I've got some in the kitchen holding onto the kitchen counter. Yep, we're all just doing what we can. It's great. But, like, I think the it great is thing great. is that even the professionals are, you know, doing that too. Like, it's not like, you know, students are in one position. Like, everyone is dancing at home and doing what they can do and – and that's kind of like a fun thing to that we're all in it together. That's true. In fact, I think we're we're going to talk about that. But let's tell everybody, you're you are here. We are in the same state together, but we are practicing good social distancing, which everybody right. needs to be doing. We need right. to be safe. We need to be healthy. And I think it's important to know that we can still connect with the ones we love. We just need to do it in a safe way. But I think reaching out just the way that Megan and I are doing right now, all of you can do that. You can reach out, whether it's your family or your friends, or if you're lucky enough to have, you know, your friends like Megan and I, now we're in the same state. We, I mean, my children are dying to come up and see Megan, but <laughs> we're not. We're being safe. 
but we can. We can call each other and yeah. reach I, out. I did a FaceTime with some friends in the company um, just the other day, and it was really nice to to see everybody. I think it gets so easily that we're all just like getting the tasks done because life's almost a little more hectic this way, and so you get onto your your you know your busy day, and and I just texted my friends I was like okay you guys I said 10 minutes to curtain <laughs> like Aww. this is happening like you have to answer your phones we were doing a FaceTime and we had a really it was really we talked for like an hour and we laughed and it was just I needed that could you see everybody on the screen yeah it was like a joint FaceTime with with three people yeah, yeah it was great I I think I think if you guys are listening out there you kids you teenagers i I would really recommend doing this. I would follow Megan's advice because I know I know you guys are missing each other. I know you're feeling as if you can't get together and you're missing your dance friends, you're missing your school friends. Uh, I would reach out, you know. Thank God they, they, thank God we have technology. Can you imagine? Yeah. Back in my day, I don't know what we would have done even in your day when you no. were a teenager. When I done? moved to New York and was away from home starting at 16, mm -hmm. I had to use a calling card, which no one even knows what that is. You t pick up the landline phone and you have to dial like 15 numbers. It's like a passcode that would like, wow. ha had enough minutes and it had a certain amount of minutes on it. And that's how I'd call my parents, maybe like every other day, definitely not every day. And, and now uh, because of iPhones, I call my mom all the time. She's probably sick of me. <laughs> <laughs> never, never. <laughs> I remember you saying you'd call your mom on the on your commute home. Yeah, yeah, when I drive home. Yeah. I like to multitask. You do like to multitask. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about what you've done with your amazing life? With my amazing life? Well, so I started in Utah, yeah. like all of you guys, and then I, I just really liked ballet more than the other, you know, dance forms I was studying. And so... I started um, really focusing on ballet at 12 and ended up uh, making my way out to New York to dance with the School of American Ballet. Um, for one year, I trained there in New York City. It's the School of New York City Ballet. And then I, um, a, after a year of being back there, I, I got into the company for Nutcracker. And there was like maybe six or seven of us that all got in together. And at this point now, there's only me and one other girl that are left in the company. So that was like wow. eight, 18 years ago, and slowly over time, um, people trickled away, and um, me and this other girl are, are the, the ones left from our generation, and, um, but it's, it's like at the beginning of your career, time goes kind of really slowly, and you're like, gosh, how do people ever do this for very long? This is like, whoa. And then by the end, you're, it kind of flies by, like years just fly by, ballet seasons and performance seasons just fly by, and... You don't even right. really, you know, you're trying to just soak up every minute of it. But at first, I remember my career going really slowly. <laughs> so tell tell everybody when you got that phone call or the meeting that you had when you had made it into the company. Um, we were at the, we were at the school at SAB, and they called me and my friends into a meeting. And I think, like, you kind of know when it's, like, a big group like that, that something like that is happening. And we were all kind of, like, at the top of our level. So we kind of were, like, looking around, being like, what, you know. And then they, they I don't even remember it very much, but I just remember them saying, like, you, we want to congratulate you guys. You guys are the next group of apprentices at New York City Ballet. And we were just, like, all super excited. And, and then quickly everything became a blur. Like, life got really busy. I remember going back to school yeah. the next day at the high school, and the, the principal, who yeah. was very used to juggling the schedules of dancers and, and students, um, she was like, do you want to drop a class? And I was like, no, I want to graduate. <laughs> she was just so excited I got into the company, and, and they, were, they were used to accommodating the schedule because suddenly, you know, now I was 17, I was still a senior, and rehearsals were during the day. So it's like... Um, right. A little bit different of a thing to manage, but we did it. Yeah. So. Well, if you can believe it, I remember it. You remember it? Gosh, it's such a blur remember, to me. I remember talking to you about it. Yep. And everything from there, don't you remember? Everything happened every year. You went from apprentice to core to soloist to principal. And you got mad at me. Do you remember this? Probably. You, don't, you do not have a good memory. When you made soloist, remember I told you, I'm like, 
you will be principal next year at this time. You wait. And you were like, don't pressure me. <laughs> and I'm like, you will. And sure enough, Miss Kaylin was right. Well, that, was, know, a, that was a little was right. too fast. It was fast. That was too fast. I, I wouldn't hope that for anybody. That's, that's rough. But um, Yeah, but that's what happens when you're amazing. Well, and also you have to seize the opportunity when it comes your way. And most oftentimes, no matter what you're doing in life, you don't even have to be a dancer, but this is good advice for anybody. If, you know, you have to be prepared and ready to accept the challenge when it's given to you. And you, if you take a minute to be like, wait, 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 I'm not ready. It'll go to someone else. So even though you're okay, afraid... So Right. Even though you're afraid so and it feels, about it. yeah. So let's talk about it. Because right now I think there's, I know a lot of teenagers, particularly that are really affected by what's happening. Mm -hmm. Their high school, middle school years, the are school important. years kind yeah. of gotten zapped. Yeah. A lot of their extracurricular, a lot of dancers were going into competitive season. Mm -hmm. That's gotten zapped. We have a lot of friends that are feeling really deflated because their chances for scholarships have kind of been taken away for them to be able to do that. And so you have a lot of experience of seize, like what you just said, seizing that moment, maybe just give them some advice of what they can do to not get sucked into that pit right. of sadness, but to rise up. Right. Well, one example I would say is um, anytime anybody gets like promoted in a company, Everybody else in the company kind of has a moment where a lot of people get depressed and are like, Ugh, it's never going to happen for me. Or, and that's kind of like a moment where I'm always telling people, this is a game of survivor. It's not about, you know, like it being convenient or on the timeline that you thought. It's when it, you know, you're, you could be the next one around the corner and you don't even know it. So you have to stay the course, keep working hard. And it's the same right now. It's like, first of all, Everyone's in the same boat. No one's in a special situation where it, this is not affecting them. So that's one thing right. to, to relieve stress about. There's no getting behind because we're all behind. You know, ev right. there's no one entering a, 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 a new place or doing something more advanced than anybody else. We're all kind of stopping. And that's kind of the saving grace of all of this. Even though it's so extreme, we're all you know, equally kind of, you know, in this difficult scenario. So I, I'm a person that likes to like look at silver linings. And I think that in, in regular life, we can all get so busy and you just have school right. and, and you're just running, running, running. And I remember how it was like, you have to wake up really early and like school so early and your homework and then ballet or dance and whatever you're doing that you care about. It all kind of seems like this endless, you know, like right. what's it called? A, like a gerbil on a, like a hamster, hamster wheel. wheel. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so now it's like that kind of stopped and we kind of all get to take a moment. And I think we all get to have a, a great moment of reflection where you can be like, what do I really want to do? And make sure that when life starts back up again, you get you really put your everything into that. And then until that moment happens, that you align yourself and position yourself in a way so that all of those things that you <laughs> all of those things that you want to happen when this is over, you're ready to go and and you're you're ready to seize those challenges. So I think it's this nice moment of reflection. It's a nice moment to rest. And that's okay to rest, you know, because right. I remember being exhausted when I was in high school and I don't, I barely even remember junior high, <laughs> but <laughs> I just remember being really exhausted as a kid and, right. and always adults saying things like, oh, it gets worse. Just wait. And it's like, no, actually I was the most tired I ever was when I was a kid. Like I definitely feel like I have more life stamina now and it's not a big deal, but, um, I think it's super, super Great that we can all like have this moment of rest, have time with our families, read a book that you don't usually get to read, you know, like with right. school, you're always like dictated what you're supposed to be focusing on. And like, this can be a moment to like really just have a luxurious, whatever you want to do. And that's really, really so rare thinking, and it would never happen in life normally. So that's cool. It's so true. I was thinking a lot about, you know, my perspective as a teacher is I teach 
I'm fortunate to teach the really young and I'm fortunate to teach the really advanced and all levels in between. And I love the fact that I have the ability and the opportunity to do that. And I worry about my really advanced. They overwhelm their bodies. They overwhelm their mind. Mm -hmm. They stress themselves out to the point that, you know, they're all, they're always on the brink of injury. Mm -hmm. They're always on the brink of a breakdown. Mm -hmm. And I think if anything, they should seize this moment to really be able to power down, yeah, meditate, heal, um, not just from the outside, but the inside. Right. I definitely think that. that for me at least, and it, it, it could be universal, the goal for the end of this time is to feel rested, to feel calm, to be in a happy place. And to then, and then, so that's the brain and the mental feeling, but then to also um, be physically where you want to be. So, like, we don't have to kill ourselves, but there's things you can do every day, like the classes you guys right. are taking, to, to maintain the strength that you've acquired over all these years. And you can still heal and recover while you kind of keep in touch and, and do um, the lessons that you guys are still doing. So that's my goal for me. It's like, I'm not going to get to the end of this and feel more injured or tired. Or I, I want to be caught up on everything. Right. I want to be rested. And I want to feel physically um, right where I need to be to get going again. So maybe let's talk about that because we have some dancers who's maybe their lives with their families have really been shaken by this. Mom has maybe lost her job. Dad's maybe lost his job. Um, financially, things are strained. Um, you definitely are in a situation where, I mean, a everybody in the art, yeah. every single person, yeah. this, is a, this is affected across the board. No one knows when they're going to get their job back. Right. We don't know when we're going to get the luxury of going back to the theater, right? back to any kind of performances. And so you are not feeling deflated. You're not letting this get the best of you. So maybe talk about how we can keep looking at the positive and keep focusing towards that end goal. This Well, I definitely know, even though it doesn't feel like it right now, that this is only temporary, like... It seemed, my mom was just saying, when 9-11 happened, it seemed like the world would never go back to how it was before. Yeah. And it did. And it really, really did. Did you know, did, did you know I had Michaela? That's my first baby. Um, 10 days before 9-11. Oh, wow. Scary. And I, I will, and so we kind of joke because her generation, they're the 9-11 babies and now they're the 2020 COVID babies. Oh, wow. It's funny. That, you know, when yeah. they're born, 9-11, yeah. and now they're graduating. That's intense. And they're during the, it's, yeah, it's like an intense beginning, an intense right. uh, senior year kind right. of a thing. But I will never forget that 9-11, I mean, for weeks, you were glued to your television. Yeah. For, I mean, it was just, you were paralyzed. Yeah. Almost with just this whole just thing. Just kind of like this but is now, the, the news yeah. is paralyzing. It's this, it's a similar thing. I will feeling. tell you, the young mom, I remember that very first day of 9-11, watching all of it unfold, and I have this little newborn baby in my arms, and I just remember thinking, you know what? It's all going to be fine, because I have this little baby. Yeah, it gives you great perspective. Just, yeah. Yeah, really but does. when you're young, it's really hard, because you only have so many years to have perspective, and feels like this could, right. this is like the end of everything but it's it is temporary and things bounce back i mean i as an example i i used to have a commute to lincoln center in manhattan where i would drive past ground zero every day and i watched them slowly rebuild the building and it's like wow. everything everything does heal and recover it's just sad that you know there has to be some cancellations and and we're going to miss out on some things but it's not just one of us missing out. We're all collectively just taking a little breather. And and no one's, right. there's no race anymore to anything. It's like everything's just right. on pause. It's not like you had to stop what you're doing, but everyone's continuing. Everyone's on pause. And I, I just like that aspect of it. That, that makes me feel better. And in a way that lets me breathe and feel like, you know, this, this isn't like right. the race is still happening for success and all of life and all of the things we want to do and getting, you know, right. all of the good grades. It's like we have a little moment to, to breathe and, and to 
work on the things that we want to work on. I feel like, uh, obviously we see in the news, New York city is getting hit the hardest. Mm -hmm. It is one of the most, I mean, it's sad. It's, I mean, it's just, it's overwhelming to hear all the news, all the stories that's coming out of it. I think about, when I think about the history of New York City Ballet, when I think about all that Balanchine went through mm-hmm. and all the struggle that he went through to get that city going, New York City Ballet, as well as so many other other uh, companies in other cities, but particularly New York City Ballet, and I guess you could say ABT, they're at the heart of the city. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, Broadway is too. Yeah. And I think once we get the city back on its feet and they get going, how much they are going to need you. Yeah. I They're mean, I hope need this institution. In, for, in my mind, I'm like, gosh, when's the next time people are going to feel comfortable sitting close to a stranger in a theater, you know, for a, right. for an hour and a half long performance. But I know it'll happen eventually. I know it'll, I know it'll slowly get back going. It's just going to be weird for a while, but um, yeah, that's inspiring. I didn't even really think I've been, I've been thinking, oh gosh, I hope I, st- I hope I still have job security at the end of this. I hope there's still live performance because I feel like that is the real um, healer. Like there's some Leonard uh, Bernstein quote about like in violence, art is what helps us recover. And I, I kind of think that that applies to this moment now. And is it, this feels like a traumatic moment in the world and, and the arts is kind of what helps the rest of humanity heal from it. And it's, right. it's, it's a way to like come together emotionally and in a big theater and for people to, to kind of commune together. It's like a spiritual thing. Right. It is a very, well, that's the arts. Yeah. Sorry. That's my ring. It tells okay. me when someone's at my door. So I was thinking you, if all of you out there that are watching this, if there's one thing you should know about Miss Kaylin and particularly Miss Galen's relationship with Megan is usually I'm the one crying and Megan's always laughing. I get very emotional and I've always been emotional from day one with her. There's so many stories. I should maybe tell them some stories. Should I tell them funny stories? Sure. We're we're at 22 minutes. (laughs) We're at 22 minutes. We should go fast. So I started teaching Megan when she was five and she was a spunky. Too bad you don't have your MC Hammer pant costume picture. You should show Oh, I have one. I'll show you. Keep talking. Keep showing. So Megan was a spunky, spunky fireball of a little girl, but a very um, sweet and very, um, oh, look at that. That's my baby. (laughs) That is my baby right there. And it's funny when I say that, all my dancers know, oh, look at that's my beauty right there. Oh, my God. (laughs) I love it. And all my dancers know, those that are watching this will know the very first day of class, I tell them, Miss Kaylin is your dance mama. And they That's know sweet. that I'm there That's to be sweet. your dance mama. Yeah. I say that to Robbie all the time. I'm like, your dance mama's wondering if you're okay. He calls me his angel. But anyways, um, <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> it's funny. But when, when Megan was little, um, it was very clear from almost the very beginning of uh, when classes started that she was on a completely different level. And I don't mean that in a real conceited way. It was just as a teacher, she was just far and away technically above all the other dancers, mostly because there's one thing I want to point out of what has been, I've seen in you from day one and I see it in you today and it's been this thread. And that's one thing I would want every dancer that could possibly listen to take away from this. Her work ethic, even as a five-year-old, is as strong then as it was that as it is today. And so I would want you to know your work ethic and how hard you work, it really does mean something. The, the time, something the time you put in matters. And, and yeah. I think right now you can feel rewarded by a lot of Instagram likes or something like that on social media. And, and that's not really what actually gets you anywhere as a dancer. You have to really put in the time, the blood, sweat, and tears. It, that, that is definitely, there's no shortcuts. Right. And I, I feel like almost social media has done a disservice yeah. to particularly dance. 
it's a distraction, but it also it. it's also a great yeah. way to be inspired. I mean, I fall. I don't. I'm not like a YouTubing person that loves to like watch Russian videos and stuff. I don't know all of the dancers in the world, but um, I follow like my favorite Russian ballerina on Instagram. I met her on a gig, and she dances with the Bolshoi, and she had just come back from having twins and. She's the nicest person. Wow. She was short like me. I was like, ah. Oh. And she was nice. And she was Russian. And I was like, wow. <laughs> and she's so beautiful. And wow. she, she posts on Instagram all these dancing videos. And, and so I got to be inspired by it. So I try to take social media in a way that is inspiring. I, I don't follow things that make me don't feel happy. I, I choose to unfollow or, or, you know, you can mute people. <laughs> if they're not bringing right. you joy, you can Marie Kondo. I would... Take this time to Marie Kondo your social media <laughs> and, and really only be in participating for things that inspire you and make you happy and make you feel like excited about life. Right. There's another quality that you've had from day one that you absolutely had not only when you were little, but you for sure have it now. And that is how humble you are. <laughs> I've never seen you, even as a child, even when... I mean, I've, I've never known you to not win first place and to not win overall. I honestly, I can't even recall a single competition where you didn't sweep everything. But there was never a time where you were ever condescending, rude, unkind to any dancer, anyone on your team, anyone in your class. I've never seen that from you. And I I feel like there's, there's cattiness and some unkindness that sometimes can happen especially through social media for sure for sure I'm uh I, I like dancing because I like also getting together with friends and and sharing something mm -hmm. that we both enjoy and so that's the part that's fun for me I mean I I also think I'd rather win something together as a group than as by myself right. and um that's what I like about New York City Ballet is that the corps de ballet is working just as hard as the principals and we all feel like we're part of the finished product but I, I have to say, when I did get promoted really early in my career, that that was one thing I felt kind of bummed about. It was like suddenly I was spending my days all by myself. And I'm like, gosh, I do this because right. I like everybody I'm working with. And so like company class is really important to me because I get to be with everyone. And I'm friends. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm, so I'm 35 right now. Most of the, the average age of New York City Ballet is probably 22. And so over the years, it's gotten younger and younger and younger compared to me. And I'm friends right. with those young kids. Like I... I love it. We're always like, we should hang out. Like, I pretend that I'm cool. But I, I like it for the community. You are cool. For the community aspect. I've always felt like I, I like to support other people. I like to see people do well. Um, I always think that the, um, there's a line in Hamilton that really inspires me. <laughs> it's at the very end, uh, they say, he says, the world is wide enough for both Hamilton and me. And I always kind of think that's like talent. Like the world is wide enough for all of us to fulfill our own potentials. It's not like anybody is in your way. We all have our own lanes and you have your own potential that you will fill. So no one's in your way. No one succeeding takes anything away from you, um, you, you doing well. There's enough space for everybody. There truly is. It, it, you won't get it if you're not working on you. And if you get distracted by everyone around you and being worried, oh, they got something I didn't get or, or they have this that I don't have. And if you really stay true to like improving yourself to the best of your abilities and knowing what you're capable of and knowing how to push yourself, you will, you know, fulfill your, your greatest potential. And so I, I think that is a good image, you know, no one's in front of you. We all have all of this space. And, and we can f be as great as we choose to be. I love it. I love it. So there was another thought that I had. I've got to show you something. This is, look at this. Oh, I remember that stationery. <laughs> Thanks with an X. Look at that love. I remember writing that like it was yesterday, Suka Juice. Oh my God. You remember that? <laughs> so you, you wrote me this note. This was when I was... It was so cute. You're like, thanks for helping me with Don Q and taking me to and from conservatory. You don't remember that, but I drove you. And in going to Zuka Juice, remember Zuka Juice was before Jamba? 
anyways, there's just, it's That's a very sweet. sweet note. And then I also have That's this cute. other adorable one from very early days. Look at this one. This was from this, this, do you remember that? Oh logo? yeah. Gosh, that makeup job was horrible. You know, I kind of agree with you on that. Yeah, that <laughs> the blue eyes and the, the, blue and the hair. My eyebrows look like caterpillars. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> but I have this adorable note. Look, oh, this cute. adorable note from you. That's not that, that long ago. My handwriting's funny. good. Very good. Yeah. Look, and I, I know, spelled your name good. right because I don't know if you're still doing it, but she used to test us, and the bonus question I would be on the spelling of her name. Do you still do, do you that? you guys all remember that, Miss Kaylin Dancers? Yes, I do. I test you. <laughs> test me. Because it's a hard name. Well, you and used to have I, a very difficult write... last name, too. I don't yes. know if I could spell that today. <laughs> they no, have, that's okay. They yeah. have it easier. <laughs> yeah. But it was, I have so many. Look, I have, look at all of these. Look oh, my God. Whoa. Look at all of them. That's from me? That's I'm sure my, my mom told me to write all of those. But they came no, from the like, heart. They came from the heart. No, they did come from the heart. Like this one, it's funny. You would write to me about all your gigs. Like, really? This is what I you would? Yes, you would tell me this is what I did this year, and you would you would lay it all out of what you did. I know. I, I don't think you're that amazing. I don't even remember. You have this horrible <laughs> memory. What's up with your memory? <laughs> I was busy. I just was doing too many things at the same time. This one's amazing, this this first one. And then you kept going. Look, it's like a double <laughs> note inside a note. Look at that. Oh, because I had a new home. But I'm gonna I'm gonna read I'm gonna read to everybody one really sweet thing okay. that she said. She said, when I was learning theme and variations, I was freaking out. You know what that feels like. You freak out a lot. <laughs> Are you talking to me? And he's, yes, I was talking oh, to you. Oh. <laughs> you know, you I have, an, I have it more under control now. You do. Back then, no. Uh, no. No. <laughs> so you said, when I was learning theme and variations, I was freaking out. And one thing that helped me was reading your letter that you had sent. And every time I read it, it brings tears to my eyes because it's so inspiring. And it's also so wonderful to know that you believe in me. Isn't that I'm the not, sweetest thing? I'm, I'm not going to cry, though. <laughs> you're not well, going to make I'm me cry. I'm trying desperately not to cry. I don't want to cry in front of everybody. <laughs> I know you're waiting for it. I cry all the time. This is this is basically what uh, Megan and my our life together is. I cry, she laughs. That's a great picture. That's I love one of my it. favorite pictures. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. yeah I think I used that photo pictures. when I applied to NYU for my MBA. You have to send five. Are you serious? I, you have to. I think I did. You have to send like five, like life moment pictures. Wow. Yeah. That's a sweet. That's a sweet moment. This is one of Wait, the very first time. Oh, I have that photo. When we were, when we were in New York. Yeah. I think you were. I had just done Beze. Uh, I do remember that. You came and saw Beze. Yeah. I did. You were. You were. Tired. Oh stressed, yeah. Overwhelmed. Oh yeah. That was you in the that. middle of. It everything being brand new. So, yeah. 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 So I was thinking about, you know, I was reading all these sweet letters and all these moments and I have, you know, look at this. This is, this is not from you, but maybe one of you dancers out there listening, you might recognize this. Look at that cute thing. How cute. That's oh, wow. Miss Kaylin. That is so with cute. With her little dancer. Not so cute. This is a funny dancer. Look what she made me this card. Ah! Of her, these little stick she's, figures. Is she falling down? <laughs> yep, she's falling down. You see, she falls down right there. <laughs> yeah, she totally falls down. She's, and then I have these like amazing, like look, do you, even just like pencil drawings. Those are so That's great. Kaylin. Oh my god, isn't that adorable? That is. Look adorable. at this beautiful one. Someone sketched me point two. That is amazing. Wow. So I was thinking about this, you know. With all this time that the dancers have, I think other, obviously we're going to rest. Obviously, we're going to improve our healing. But I think we should show gratitude. That's great. To I those love that. that are around us. Yeah, especially because say, we all have a lot to be grateful for, even though it seems like a rough time. I think it's a moment to be like, wow, it could be really 
you know, a different situation. It is a different situation for some people. And so if that's not your case, wow, so much, you know, I'm so grateful that I have a home to be at right now and be with family and like just those little things. But I think reach out. I say get a letter, get some paper. I love that. Um, Send something to someone. Maybe it is your former teacher. Maybe it's, you know, a friend that you haven't connected with in a while. I, and I, the fact that we have these memories, oops, sorry about that. The fact that we have, I have these memories, it, it means a lot. That's and cool. I, I like that. I and I like the, sna- the snail mail approach is better because I never keep emails. So, no. Yeah. And you think you're going to remember the text. I mean, it is nice to send text, but the fact that I have all these letters from you. Yeah, letters are nice. And the pictures. So I say everybody. That's nice. Write to somebody. Draw a picture. Send somebody a note that that made a difference in your life. Because I think it's going to mean something in this time right now. That's great. I love that. Yay. So, So before we go, any last parting words of inspiration and comfort to some anyone out there? Um, just that I don't think that you can get, you don't have to get that behind now. You can still do a lot in your, in your house and, and keep all of those muscles active that you usually do. You can't, you know, you don't have space to travel and jump, but you can still do the rest of the classes. So, you know, even if that's not your favorite part, you, you learn to make it your favorite part right now. And, and you, and you work on that. You work on what you can. It, and it's a great moment for any time in life when things aren't, you know, the perfect conditions. Learning how right. to push through and still succeed within that. So if they want to watch you teach them class, where do they go? I have some YouTube videos I'm putting out. I need to make some more beginner ballet ones. But um, right now yes. they're, they're more like intermediate advanced because I'm, I'm selfishly just doing them for myself to stay in shape. <laughs> So these are really classes that feel good to me. And uh, if they seem complicated, you can stop and start them. You know, it's not um, like it's like a live Instagram where we have to go really quick and no one's going to remember anything. So they're, right. they're there for forever. And um, I'm going to try to put out more um, beginner content too. So Nice. Yeah. Meganfairchild.com, right? Well, that's my website. But this is just a, a YouTube channel with my name. I love it. Yeah. So everybody... Go check it out. Yeah. Megan's the best. <laughs> well, I love you, my darling. Love you, you too. Know that. Love you. And and wishing all my best to your students. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Keep Bye. dancing. Bye.